a class. It's uh, Professor Sensky, and uh, <coughs> just had a couple of bugs uh, that I wanted to talk about um, for the homework assignment. Some people have asked me questions, and um, just a few things I want to I want to kind of address that might help you. So, um, if you're using your own cross section that you made, uh, which which might be something like a rectangle or you know like some kind of funky shape, um, a problem you might run, a problem that you might run into is that um, it doesn't doesn't uh, when you add the scale component, it doesn't really scale properly. Um, it might might try to scale off to the side, or it might do something funky. Um, that's because uh, when you use your own shape, it doesn't really have a center. Uh, so you actually ha uh, you actually have to tell the computer where the center is. Um, when you use a circle, it obviously has a center, uh, but these other shapes don't. And so uh, one component you can use is called like the area, you know, like component, and it looks like this M2 here. And you put some geometry in, and then it gives you the center point. So if I look at that, it's just actually this little green point right here. And that works for any kind of uh, flat geometry. Okay, So any geometry you use, you can add this area component. And uh, that's going to give you a center point. And then you, you plug that center point into the C um, part of the scale component. And that's going to give you um, a proper scale. And so that's how I, I was able to take a rectangle that I drew <clears throat> and then actually uh, use the scale component to add it to my to my sketch. Okay, and that you might want to do that if you're making a more classical kind of column. Um, again, for circles and other geometry that actually have built-in centers, you don't need this. But um, this, you know, when you use the area component, it's kind of a nice hacky way to uh, find a center. Okay, um, another uh, thing that might happen uh, is that you know when when we when we do that um, piece of the code where we add things into that curve that we divided into points. Um, remember, we had to do like the graft on that. That can that can also be kind of a problem sometimes if you use different kinds of geometry other than what we've been talking about. Uh, you know, if, if you use things other than like circles. So one one way that I found that uh, works is um, just go ahead and um, make your loft first. Like just make one object, okay, and then you can go ahead and uh, make your curve. The way, that, the way that I showed you. So we'll take the curve and we'll divide length. And then we'll go ahead and add that uh, curve to it. <clears throat> and then plug our slider in. I made all this dependent upon this one slider for the length. So I'm going to drag this all over here. Uh, plug this into the length. And then we have our, our points, right? So that whenever I change the length, I get more points, and then my column adjusts, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a component we haven't talked about yet. I'm going to do like an orient component. And what that's going to do is it allows me to orient a piece of geometry from one plane to another. And if we give it multiple planes, it's actually going to uh, copy it. It's sort of like a move, only we're not just doing the, the, the point. We're actually uh, placing it along uh, a different plane. And that's going to allow us to copy some geometry instead of just starting an object from that point, we're going to copy geometry. So again, I've got my points, which can be considered the, the starting point for a plane. And I've got the plane that my thing started in. So I mean, this thing wants the geometry, which is the loft. And it wants a reference plane, which is actually just fine. It's x, y. That's what we want. And then um, the target plane. And target planes are all these division points. <clears throat> and you can see like that's going to give us um, that kind of copy effect. So instead of copying all the sections and then you know um, using the divide thing and then lofting them, we can uh, make the loft first and then we can orient them. And it's roughly the same same thing, but it might be a little bit easier for you guys if you're using different cross sections. Um, the one the one that I did in, in lab was just using circles, um, and so we didn't have a problem with that. And that method would work for this too. So. Just two things that might help you out. Uh, first thing, you know, again, using the area component to find a center point for your odd shapes, okay? And then two, um, using the orient component to uh, make your copies along a line uh, instead of just grafting uh, your cross sections um, on those points, okay? So two different methods. Uh, hopefully that, that helps uh, answer some problems. Um, you know, this was how I was able to get um, these kind of classical kind of columns. And, um, you can see that they share the same datum line, but they get thicker uh, as, as you use fewer of them. So that's kind of a nice bit of logic there. Okay? Uh, 
hope that answers some questions. I'll uh, see you guys on Tuesday.